Let's analyze what happens if you treat DNA, that is pure DNA, shown on the left, with the enzyme deoxyribonuclease, an enzyme that catalyzes hydrolysis of the phosphodiester bonds. Well, if you treat pure DNA with deoxyribonuclease, or DNAs for short, you're going to get rapid hydrolysis down to the nucleotide monophosphate breakdown products, right? Uh, AMP, CMP, TMP, GMP. What if you take the 10 nanometer fibers, the nucleosome beads on a string structures, and treat them with DNAs? Well, they will undergo hydrolysis, but it will be relatively slow. Uh, nucleotide monophosphates will accumulate slowly. So why the difference? It's because in the 10 nanometer fiber, these nucleosome structures, the histone proteins block the access of DNAs to DNA. They're protecting the DNA from digestion. And that's why you're not getting the rapid hydrolysis down to nothing but nucleotide monophosphates. That suggested an experiment that's shown here. So beads on a string could be digested with a deoxyribonuclease, in this case a particular one called deoxyribonuclease 1, and digestion that uh, was allowed to proceed for a long time resulted in the nucleosomes being broken apart. And so basically when you look in the electron microscope, what you saw were these beads. Now I've drawn the bead to suggest the octamer core of proteins in the nucleosome. Uh, but they all broke apart, and you would see them at random in a field in the electron microscope. What if I digest with deoxyribonuclease 1, but for a shorter time, say for several different times? So in other words, I would put a, set up a tube, put in the 10 nanometer filaments I had extracted, and then throw in DNAs 1, and then every minute or two I would pull a little sample out and see what had formed. As you would expect, the necklace of nucleosomes tends to get shorter and shorter over time. Well, you could actually separate the DNA that was left behind after the digestion in electrophoresis on a gel that will separate the DNA by its length or its size. What you would predict is on the left, the complete digestion would lead to very small size fragments, those which basically surround the nucleosomes if you throw out the, the proteins. If you extract and throw out the histones on the sample on the right, it should contain a number of different sized DNA molecules differentially protected by two, three, four, five, or six, or however many nucleosomes were still left. And that's what you see when you look at a gel. These are uh, from a textbook, which means they're probably third, fourth, or fifth generation from an original photograph, so they're not the best. But trust me, in the electrophoretic gel on the lane in the left is undigested uh, DNA. So in other words, that's 10 nanometer filaments that never saw DNAs. And all you see is uh, some material at the very top of the gel where the slowest material runs, and the slowest material is the largest material. So the largest the DNAs run the slowest, and all you see is high molecular weight or high length material at the top. And that's expected because if you have 10 nanometer fibers and you haven't treated them with DNAs one, you don't have smaller pieces. The middle lane contains what you see after digesting with DNAs for a short period of time. And as you can see, several bands have formed, and they are numbered here, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. There's still a fair amount of undigested material near the top of the lane, suggesting that that DNA's digest time was not enough to completely attack all of those 10 nanometer fibers. But you are getting several different lengths of DNA, and I'll talk about that in just a second. In the last lane on the right is a sample that was digested for a longer period of time. And what you are supposed to see, and what you do indeed see, although you could argue that this picture doesn't show it well, is that the bands that formed, the lower molecular weight bands that are moving faster in the gel, have increased in intensity relative to a decrease intensity in the larger sized fragments of DNA. So what does all this mean? Well, let's take a look at the cartoon of what might be going on on the right and start at the bottom. The number one band is the smallest band. Is the longer digestion doesn't produce a band any shorter than that number one band. And we can determine how many nucleotides are in that band. It's 146 bases long, or 146 base pairs in double helical terms, right? And that must be the amount of DNA protected by being wrapped around a nucleosome. That was the amount of DNA in a nucleosome, if you will. Is that possible? Well, if you take a look at some of the larger structures, Let's look at band two. Well, that's 350 nucleotides. 350. Well, okay, so 146. What is that? 292 nucleotides. If you had two nucleosomes, you would expect to produce or protect 292 base pairs, wouldn't you? Well, not exactly, because then there's DNA that represents the string between the beads. 
So if one nucleosome has 146 nucleotide pairs in it, and two nucleosomes has 350 nucleotide pairs, and every nucleosome protects 146 nucleotides only, then 58 nucleotides, or approximately 58 to 60 nucleotides, must be the length of the DNA that connects two nucleosomes. Is that possible? Well, very much so, because you can do the arithmetic for yourself by looking at the third, the fourth, and the fifth bands. The sizes of the DNAs that you get are 550 nucleotides, 750 nucleotides, and 950 nucleotides. Again, if you do the math, you will see that if you allow 146 nucleotides to be the amount wrapped around each nucleosome, then you get a constant roughly 60 nucleotides between each nucleosome. And so you begin to get a picture of the 10 nanometer filament in terms of the length of DNA that comprise it. And that portion which is protected by the nucleosome from DNA digestion.